Are we, are we doing anything with Andy's seat position? That's just the way I'm built, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Me arse. Wouldn't you think you'd probably, you'd probably be better at... Surfit! <laughs> Next I'm only joking. I'm... Can we just put oh. the... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, get a... Oh, oh bless. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> You're gonna look... <laughs> <laughs> uh. Just the one cushion is there? <laughs> And welcome to Have I Got News for You. I'm John Bishop. In the news this week, after putting his political ambitions on hold, David Miliband has said he's happy to pursue other interests outside of politics. <laughs> <laughs> During the recording of the Kazakhstan TV's version of Dragon's Den, there were very few takers for the automatic clothes dryer. <laughs> And after a breakfast meeting in Paris, Carla Bruni spots what happened to the raisin that she accidentally spat out from her French pastry. <laughs> there was something quite nice about that. <laughs> On my right is a comedian and writer who one reviewer described as like an aged grandparent, an old stuffy traditionalist, bemused and angered in equal measure by the state of modern society. And joining in is Miles Joe. <laughs> and with Paul Merton tonight as an actor and performer who first came to notice when performing at the Edinburgh Festival in 1976, where his show faced stiff competition for audiences from both the other shows that were on that year. <laughs> Please welcome Andy Hamilton. <laughs> And we start with the biggest stories of the week. Ian and Miles, take a look at this. Oh, it's GDP. It's up 0.8%. Oh, look, it's the West Wing. Oh, no, it isn't. Oh, uh, a tea dance. Now, that is reassuring. Yep. It is. Oh, and there's the leader of the tea dance party. <laughs> <laughs> or is that Ian Duncan Smith? <laughs> oh, leaders smoking. Macmillan, Wilson... Um, who's Thing that? <laughs> A load of stories there. Which do you want first? The good news, we're not in recession. The bad news, Clegg smokes. <laughs> well, do you think we're in recession or not in recession? Because what's been said is that this 0.8% really doesn't count because it's not even a number. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't really noticed the recession. <laughs> <laughs> On that side of the panel, I don't suppose you have, no. <laughs> Was it tough your way, is it, John? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is technically very good news. It was, um, we were 1.2% last quarter, and this is a stonking 0.4% decrease. So that's very good. Yeah, yeah. That's you see, right. you can see people's unrivaled joy. <laughs> Not only have we got this huge growth rate, but the ratings agency have changed our rating. So Britain is no longer basket case. And we've moved up to not as bad as Greece. Mm. <laughs> Which is a, it's a pretty high rating nowadays. Yeah. Particularly those people who've been on holiday in Greece and have had to wipe the bottoms and put it in a bin. That's wrong, and they're above us. <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone ever had that experience on a Greek holiday? What, what? Don't what? go to Greece. <laughs> they don't show you that bit in Mamma Mia, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I try to follow this story. Yeah. And I watched Stephanie Flanders. She said that it's good news because it's above expectations. And because it's 0.8, that means we're probably not 
facing the prospect of a double dip recession, which means that we're probably not uh, facing the prospect of having to sell Scotland on eBay. <laughs> which is George Osborne's plan B, apparently. Yes. <laughs> what, what, what happens if you lose your credit, if Britain loses its credit rating? And the ratings agency are called Standard and Poor. Mm, those are the two ratings. <laughs> <laughs> what happens? No-one lends you any money anymore. So when you're trying to borrow money to pay back the money you've borrowed, you're not allowed to borrow anymore. No. Or if you are allowed to borrow, it's such a huge interest rate that you're borrowing what you haven't even borrowed or thought of borrowing. But, but I hope I've made that clear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but how reliable are these figures? Because, right, it's a measure of GDP, which is manufacturing. And what's manufacturing nowadays? What is, manufacturing is a figures, mostly. Right. It's a TV show. It's a TV show... It's the X Factor manufacturing. It's definitely manufactured. <laughs> but is it manufacturing? Are you suggesting it's rigged in some way? To a private eye, he doesn't get out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not suggesting anything, <laughs> Ian. That's entirely your interpretation of. Oh, good. Well, All right, right. Good. well, that's good, good, yeah, good yeah. legal out there. <laughs> <laughs> now, it looks like Ian, you're going to prison. How do you. Can you, can you <laughs> come back with something now? Wouldn't you love it if, if the editor of Private Eye was sent to prison? Because now you've got to be really bad to go to prison. And they'll be putting you in with murderers and saying, what did you do? I said, I said something a little bit slanderous. <laughs> <laughs> I accused X Factor of being real. <laughs> no, I asked. It's very, very different. Um... <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll say it's rigged, if that helps. <laughs> yeah. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll say it's rigged as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Down no, together, yeah, exactly. that's no, yeah. I'll, I'll that go. That bloke in the audience before the show, he told me he knows it's rigged. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and not only is it rigged, it's shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. There, are, there is news that the economy is on the up, but there has been some changes in terms of pensions. You know what's going yeah, on? Yeah, there's a new flat rate pension, which wasn't announced before, so everybody is going to get 140 quid a week. They're very keen on pensioners, this government. Um, apparently, they're 10 million pensioners, and most of them vote. <laughs> there may be some connection between those two <laughs> statements. Anyway, they're getting everything. Winter fuel allowance. <laughs> I think this whole story's been uh, grossly misreported. You know, when they, they say that the government is thinking of... Um, for everyone, putting it up to 140... Uh, I think they're talking about the retirement age. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about Brucey? Does he get a pension eventually? Or does he work forever? Have you got some personal interest in the matter? <laughs> no, I just want to see him happily retired. <laughs> 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 and there was a bit of a fuss about housing benefit this week as well, wasn't there? Because they're going to cut down on housing benefit. People, the, the poorest people who are claiming housing benefit will have to move out of London. Uh, I think the trucks will arrive in the middle of the night. Um, <laughs> they'll be taken to the uh, North Sea, where there's plenty of work for those who want to look for it. And, uh, <laughs> you know, become a halibut and feed the kids. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously, after last week's doom and gloom, the government is trying to remain a little bit upbeat. And David Cameron went to the CBI. He said he wants to unleash the most entrepreneurial and dynamic era in British history. Could now, happen. Yeah, it could happen, which means that obviously the country needs entrepreneurs and inventors in order to move on with its next level of development, which I think, Miles, you will appreciate. Or should I say, Archie, the inventor. Take a box. It's a car. <laughs> hey, it's a car. Inventing me, Archie, is never a bore. Come on, let's make some more. Build a rocket from a squidgy box and stick on bits of junk. Here's a crazy clip clop pop it <laughs> Dance and do the honky tonk <laughs> Yeah, great. Do they use that to bring people out of comas? <laughs> <laughs> That's great, yeah, I thought being on Have I Got News for You would be a real chance to uh, finally lay to rest, Balamori, but, uh, yeah. I can't really... I've I, I prepared stuff about the news and everything. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry about it, we've got Andy's first porn clip coming up soon, isn't it? Yeah, it's coming back to me now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he had the cushion in that one as well. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, 
I'm just striking a blow for the smaller man. <laughs> <laughs> Which Lib Dem is closely associated with the cuts? Danny Alexander. It was, yes. The big cuts are mostly his idea, but apparently the spin doctors don't think he's pretty enough to sit next to George Osborne when he delivered his big speech. He was actually handed a note by a spin doctor to move so that Nick Clegg could get closer to What's David that? Cameron. Danny Alexander was sat behind the Chancellor as he delivered the swinging cuts. A note was sent from one of the spin doctors. It said, Danny, you're ginger. <laughs> you're in the way. <laughs> Can you do us a favour and move? <laughs> Know that. I it's don't know whether rude. he said it was because he was ginger. I made that. <laughs> 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 he just moves behind Osborne. Maybe the note said, Can somebody check if George needs changing? <laughs> <laughs> what was the sign this week that despite the hard times, Cameron and Clegg have a lot in common? They've both been on uh, Desert Island Discs. Mm. Clegg chose lots of songs that he claims he hated before the election. <laughs> well, it was interesting. According to The Express, their musical choices on Desert Island Discs complement each other perfectly. Mm. The only group that they agreed upon was Radiohead. That just doesn't cheer you up. No, you're absolutely right. <laughs> Radiohead. He thinks, <laughs> Ian thinks you're referring to Lord Reith. <laughs> <laughs> they are the most miserable band in the world. Um, I, uh, I've actually heard the Radiohead and I can tell you they are pretty gloomy. Are they? <laughs> <laughs> I think in this whole situation, you've got to accept that it's being... Tactically, it's being brilliantly played by Cameron. Basically, what he's doing is he's using the Lib Dems as a human shield. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you're looking at. It's not, ri it's not a coalition, it's a hostage situation. <laughs> <laughs> ah, but they both smoke, like all the leaders in the, the film clip. It was a luxury item, wasn't it? He said smoking, that would be my... His luxury thing would be to have some cigarettes. But that... That's not really a luxury item, cigarettes. I mean, they're available in the majority of convenience stores. Aren't they? <laughs> well, it was interesting that Newsnight investigated whether we, as a nation, actually care the fact that Nick Clegg is a smoker. Nick Clegg smokes. Oh, I don't know. He does. He does. Do you care? No, no, I don't care. <laughs> well, what's the question exactly? <laughs> Is there a wider political significance to the fact that Nick Clegg smokes? <laughs> oh, I don't understand. You speak quick, quickly, too quickly for me. Um, Nick Clegg smokes. Nick Clegg smokes. Yeah. Smokes. Nick, Mr. Clegg, he, Clegg. He, he smokes. Yes. No, I don't know. He does. <laughs> okay. Do you care? No, I don't care. No, 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 no I don't care. <laughs> no. Cameron's given up smoking. Clegg still smokes. Which gives right. Cameron a huge political advantage. Yeah. Because it may, sooner or later, there'll be a cabinet meeting and Clegg will be dying to nip out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> back around the back number 10. Yeah. He'll come back and Cameron will have abolished income tax and brought back hanging. <laughs> <laughs> so there has been suggestions that we are at the stage of economic growth. Yeah. Does, does anyone know what Professor Pissarides <laughs> yeah. has to say about it all? That's not how you pronounce my name. <laughs> <laughs> He's a Greek economist and a Nobel Prize winner. He is, is he? a Nobel Prize winner, yeah. Chris Pissarides. Yeah, <laughs> I think you might call it Pissarides. That's the same, isn't it? It's the same. Yeah, it's less from Liverpool, more from Greece. Oh. Oh. <laughs> true, true. Although, <laughs> you've got to be honest, it just is funny. <laughs> Pissarides is funny. Where is he from? He's uh, from uh, Greece. Uh, well, presumably he wasn't bullied because Pissarides is about as amusing as Bishop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I Sorry, I mean, just the casual xenophobia. I thought we might drop it for a minute. <laughs> That's not casual xenophobia. Look, I, I didn't know he was from You've got Greece. A tie on. Mm. I didn't know he was. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. I've dressed, I've dressed up for this racism. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <Come> on. <laughs> so the government is supposed to be saving money by getting rid of quangos. How long will it take yeah. to recover the cost of shutting all the quangos down? How long will it take? Well, I mean, there's three ways of looking at it. There's looking at it in terms of chimpanzee life, there's looking at it in terms of the lifespan of the mayfly, and there's also looking at it by speaking in a silly, high-pitched, squeaky voice. <laughs> <laughs> Eh, uh, okay, eh... Uh... <laughs>
Is the answer Pisanides? <laughs> I didn't think I had the silly eye pitch voice. No, no, you haven't, no. Nah. <laughs> well, I disguised it so you wouldn't know it was you. Yeah. <laughs> Quango's an acronym, isn't it? Does it stand for something? Quasi autonomous non governmental organisation. Oh, that was a good guess. It was. <laughs> <laughs> Why did Ian Duncan Smith annoy some people this week? Well, he said you should get on a bus and go and look for work. Uh, which obviously has sort of echoes of what uh, Norman Tebbit said. I mean, it, actually, if you get on a bus, you do often see adverts for jobs, but they're normally to drive a bus. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a very narrow field of work he's suggesting uh, that people go for. Uh, of course, I mean, Tebbit said, get on a bike and look for work, and so he's saying get on a bus, which suggests, I mean, the subtext is either uh, public transport has increased uh, in terms of quality, since Tebbit was telling that, or he's, it's a sort of tacit acknowledgement that there aren't enough cycle lanes for... <laughs> for job seekers. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I actually said was, I saw a programme about how there were no jobs in May for Tidville, but they didn't know if they got on a bus an hour's journey, they'd be in Cardiff and they could look for jobs there. <laughs> but he does have an impressive knowledge of the sort of uh, times and distances of the bus service <laughs> <laughs> in the South Wales area, for which he deserves more credit than we're giving him. <laughs> Peter Mandelson is back in the news. Does anyone know why? Is it this film about him? He's called The Real Prime Minister. Was he the real Prime Minister? That's the humble title of the film. <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of Mandelson backstage, and the bit I saw, he was just whinging all the time. Mm -hmm. He was complaining about Gordon Brown not being able to tie his tie <laughs> properly. Yeah. Which I don't know about you, but actually, that lost my vote. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I've given up. Why can't he tie a tie like anyone else and centre it like anyone else and have it remain there? Because he's only got one eye. <laughs> you know, the radio presenter Stuart McConey told me this fantastic story. He, he met Mandelson, and Mandelson, well, they were chatting away, Mandelson said, Oh, my media image is a bit absurd. You know, me as this great prince of darkness, they call me this Machiavellian figure. It's just ridiculous. And he said that Mandelson's phone rang, and Mandelson, excuse me a moment, and he turned away and he heard Mandelson say, This must be suppressed. <laughs> <laughs> On the auto queue, it says skip to Cherie Blair question. I only say that because it's been there for about 20 minutes. Turn it off. Cherie Blair! Yeah. <laughs> He's back in the news. Can anyone tell us why? Yeah, she's just recently appeared as a question in Have I Got News For You. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to speak. I know this, miss. He knows it. Uh, I know this because it appeared in Private Eye. <laughs> she's been selling... You mean um, to tell me you read this magazine? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> it's terrific. It's well worth it. Isn't no, it? um... Uh, where, where, would I, would I be, where would I be able to buy it? <laughs> Any reputable news agent. <laughs> she was caught selling um, Tony Blair's signature on eBay. Oh, no. Really? <laughs> it, someone rang our office, yeah. um, and a journalist called Jane McKenzie was given this tip and thought, all right, I'll go on eBay and I'll buy them to check that it's Cherie Blair. So, for a tenner, she got the signature. Then she rang back and said, um, I worked for Private Eye and I bought this. And Cherie Blair said, oh, I was only doing this because some other people are selling them for 30 quid. And I thought that was an outrageous rip-off. Anyway, it's, it's all a misunderstanding, and she wasn't doing it to make money. She was doing it to stop people cashing in on Tony Blair, because yeah. that's her job. <laughs> She's also been selling lots of Tony's stuff. Yes, Which in most buyer. relationships would be a bad sign, yeah. I think. <laughs> <laughs> but the latest one is she was on eBay, she posted um, a watch that Berlusconi gave to Tony Blair. Can you imagine <laughs> how tasteful a watch that Berlusconi gave to Hands that grope the numbers as they go around. <laughs> <laughs> I see what a second hand is doing. <laughs> <laughs> Tells you the time that Berlusconi should be doing. <laughs> it's the continuing fallout from the spending review. The government has announced that pensions will rise to £140 a week, which means in years to come, retired people will have a little bit more money to pay off their student loans. <laughs> To raise money, David Cameron is planning to convert Number 10's gift shop into a public business with such merchandising items as the Downing Street mug or the Nick Clegg as it's known. <laughs>
Paul and Andy, here's yours. Oh, right, so submarine, uh, there's the... Oh, uh, uh, this is the ancient spell of how to get the submarine off the bottom of the sea. <laughs> um, World hernia championship. Yeah. <laughs> So this is the submarine which hit the sand bank and is now sort of up and about and is well, not up and about but is sort of now sailing s safely through the rest of the sea having got off the sand bank and it was near Scotland that's why you got Scottish people. Yeah. Our question was a lot quicker than theirs. It wasn't was. It? <laughs> the important thing about that submarine yeah, yeah. is it's new. It's a stealth submarine. That's right. Yeah. Nobody is supposed to know <laughs> where, it, where it is. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the captain's supposed to know where He's it is, to obviously. Know. <laughs> yeah. 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 But other than that, nobody else. <laughs> it is true that it's apparently got these rubberized tiles so that it makes it a stealth submarine. Can anyone spot it? <laughs> <laughs> but this is one of those special submarines. It doesn't need to be in water. It can go as far as Wolverhampton. That's right, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it is quite amusing that it's called HMS Astute. <laughs> <laughs> who, who is naming? Our warships these days. All right, so you decide you'll name them after adjectives. That's fair enough. So you go for HMS Intrepid. Yeah. HMS, HMS Obsolete. HMS <laughs> Fearless. <laughs> HMS Astute and its sister ship, HMS Shrewd. Mm. <laughs> HMS Canny. Yeah. HMS Coquettish. Yeah. <laughs> And HMS but, aground. Yeah. <laughs> well, there, are, there have been various theories as to why it run aground. Too new. It was too new. The controls were still swathed in bubble wrap. Yeah. So couldn't... <laughs> the uh, water was too shallow, wasn't it? Factually correct. Yeah. To be fair. Yeah. Yeah. Sandbanks move, don't they? They sort of like they move in the tide, so they sort of maybe they didn't have up-to-date maps. Well, they apparently, had a map yeah. That said, here be dragons. <laughs> <laughs> apparently, the mail said that it had to do with the fact that they were using old charts. Which, I, know, I mean, I know there's been spending cuts, but you think yeah. you could have got a Tom Tom, couldn't mm. you? Yeah. <laughs> how on earth can you use old charts? Oh, but imagine how irritating a sat nav in that submarine would have been. You are on a sandbank. Mm. <laughs> you are on a sandbank. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the tabloids actually tracked down a expert yeah. on submarine design, uh, mm. an engineering lecturer called Professor Carl Ross. These subs shouldn't go aground. <laughs> Something's gone wrong. <laughs> Thanks, Prof. <laughs> but there is a feature of this particular submarine's design that's yeah. quite unique. Does anyone know what it is? Wheels. No. Quite. Well, hey, I can see the inventor in you. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have a periscope. Exactly. Oh, well, that's magic. a pretty useless sub, isn't it? <laughs> what do they do all day? They can't say, up oh, periscope. <laughs> yeah. But it also might explain why it ran into a sandbank. <laughs> but this was, this was a cock-up this week of nuclear proportions, but it's not the only nuclear cock-up that's come to light this week. Does anyone know the other one? Um, did we accidentally bomb Norway? <laughs> oh. Is this Bill Clinton? Yeah. This is my favourite story. Bill Clinton mm. lost the oh, nuclear yeah. attack codes for about four months, mm. I think. They said to him, they said to him, have you, have you got the nuclear codes, Mr President? And he went, oh, do you know, I had them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hang on, I was upstairs. And we thought Bush was an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> But Clinton didn't admit them because they were in a pair of trousers that he'd left yeah. in the bedroom <laughs> <laughs> that he hadn't returned to. Actually, I've no evidence for that. I've just made that. <laughs> so he left this bedroom without his trousers. <laughs> That's what he <laughs> And Wade's husband came in the door saying, "Why you?" <laughs> <laughs> Do you, know, do you know what he kept the code on? Was it on a piece of paper written, top secret nuclear code? <laughs> <laughs> it was actually on a laminated piece of card attached to his credit cards with a rubber band. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're told not to keep your pin number. <laughs> <laughs> rubber card, apparently it's called the biscuit. They don't call it that anymore since uh, George Bush dunked it in his tea and nearly choked on it. <laughs> So it's been a week of military incompetence, culminating in the British nuclear submarine HMS Astute running aground just off a Scottish island. HMS Astute is designed to be at sea 10 months of the year and is kitted out accordingly. According to the Daily Mirror, this is the first submarine in which each crew member sleeps in their own bunk. <laughs> 
At least for a couple of weeks, that's true. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Afghan president has admitted receiving bags of crass from the other rogue nuclear state, Iran. It's now emerged that last year the Iranian ambassador gave President Karzai a gift of £600,000 in cash. Whilst not wanting to be outdone, the British ambassador gave him a family-sized box of Ferrero Rocher. <laughs> and so to round two, the picture spin quiz. Buzz in when you know the story. <laughs> the Crown Estates own a lot of the coastal waters, mm. and they're getting a big grant to put wind farms in them. So the royal family are becoming richer as part of the comprehensive spending review. They you get... may like that or not. It's a touch unfair in the circumstances, but tough. <laughs> How mental is that? The Crown Estates owns all of the seabed. Up the royal family owning parts of Britain. <laughs> <laughs> They're in the sea as How well. How long has this been going on for? <laughs> I think Charles has put her up there on that photo. <laughs> He's getting desperate. He said, you're not coming down till you abdicate, Mummy. That's what's happening. <laughs> He hates uh, wind farms, doesn't he, Charles? He thinks they're a blot on the landscape. The royal family are, ironically, going to profit from things that just seem to sort of stand there not doing a great deal. So, wind farm and business. <laughs> <laughs> I think for the purposes of compliance, we should tell the viewers that that is a trick photo. She's actually on the one at the back. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from Prince Charles, who's a big fan of wind? Is it Prince Charles? Well, I said the part from him. So oh. I, would, I would hazard a guess it's not him. Sorry. I... <laughs> I find it very difficult to know what you're saying if it's not on the auto cue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um... <laughs> uh, Pr Sorry, that's completely unfair, John. You have a beautiful voice. Beautiful voice. <laughs> well, I, I know what I sound like. I'm all right. So I can live with it. I've, got, I've heard my own answer machine and thought, who's that knobhead? <laughs> No, well, it's David Cameron. Obviously, he said no. we need thousands of offshore turbines, each one as big as the Gherkin, which is apparently his name for Eric Pickles. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone know what the other good news is for the Queen this week? She's still Queen. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know. There was some survey of middle-class people. Mm -hmm. And they've, they, they were asked to vote for the people they admire, and they vote for the Queen as number one. Um, is that right? <laughs> yeah, apparently she topped the poll of middle-class heroes. Do you know why they said she was popular with the middle class? Is it because she's got a difficult family and she copes very well? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. What they said is that people respect her for dealing with a very difficult family. <laughs> I think, obviously, they're mixing her up with Barbara Windsor, but that's <laughs> what she said. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, let's have a look, because this list was derived from 2,000 people whose income ranged from 25,000 to 150,000. From 1 to 10 was number 1, the Queen, number 2, Bear Grill. <laughs> 7, Dizzy Rascal. Is he not middle class? Have you come across Dizzy at the Polo Club? <laughs> I remember he appeared on Newsnight once and Paxman turned to him and said, So, Mr. Rascal. <laughs> <laughs> what was the reason that Danny McNogue was on the list for? She's on the X Factor. <laughs> he said that she earned the underdog status by oh, sitting right. in Cheryl Cole's shadow on X Factor. Cheryl Cole doesn't cast a shadow. <laughs> So that's the top ten middle-class heroes. It's depressing that Anne Widdicombe was on it, though, doesn't it? I mean, that's just... that's strictly come dancing for you, isn't it? Because yes. a few years back, she yeah. was quite an unpopular government minister. Yes. Now, she's everybody's darling, and it, it worries me. Well, I, I don't think she's everybody's darling. No. She's been restored. Her reputation's been restored. So, I think next series, I've got this vision of Brucey saying, they're now Anton and Imelda Marcos. <laughs> <laughs> Nice to pal pot you. <laughs> Fingers on buzzers, teams. <laughs> About point eight of an octopus. I don't know if you're a, I don't know if you're a numbers man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's, uh, that, that is, uh, he was called Paul. Well, he still is, but I mean, you know, may, may he he's called the late Paul. The late. <laughs> he he was uh, he had incredible foresight. Uh, even by the standards of, uh, of an octopus. And... <laughs> he was offered two boxes of mussels 
and each one had a, the country's national flag on it. And he chose seven consecutive German results. And now he's got one wrong and he's been killed, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what them Germans are like. Yeah. <laughs> There was somebody who found him a little bit offensive, to say the least. Oh, yes, um, Mohammed Ahmadinejad. Yeah. Got really cross with an octopus. He did. He actually said the revelations that the octopus was predicting matches showed all that is wrong with the Western <laughs> world. <laughs> but, you know, in a way, he's right. <laughs> <laughs> There were some other dead animals in the news this week. It was a, a, a lovely stag. Lovely stag has been shot for, uh, for money. The Exmoor Emperor, a giant red stag, thought to have been the biggest wild land animal in the UK, who has controversially been shot by a man with a very small penis. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a good aim. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you want... A living creature's head staring at you off your wall. That is just such a. Oh, peculiar... it won't be living by that stage. And... <laughs> no, no, thank you for straightening that out, Mark. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's that old joke, isn't it? You must be going a hell of a speed when you hit that wall. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you always want to go around the other side of the wall. Hope there's an arse hanging there. So... <laughs> so I'm going to keep your tea towels. <laughs> It wasn't. <laughs> it's now going to cheer everybody up. Mm. Across the pond has been the traditional annual dog dressing up for Halloween costume parade. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> we now, think... I'm, I'm confused. Uh, which one's the pet? Is it the, mm. is it the crocodile with a dog shoved in its mouth? <laughs> 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 I must say, I find that amusing. <laughs> no, no, no. That's, that's, become, that's become the product of an ill mind now, isn't it? <laughs> Time now for the odd one out round. Christine O'Donnell, Paul Daniels, Fiona Robertson from the Tourist Attraction, Wookie Hall, and Toulouse from Endubs. Yes, Christine O'Donnell. Uh, she's part of the Tea Party movement in America. She's claimed that, said on a TV station about 20 years ago, that she was part of... Uh, she wasn't actually a witch, but she knew people who were involved in witchcraft, so that made me think it must be about witchcraft. She is playing a witch, cos in Wookiee Hole they have an actress pretending to be a witch, cos a witch yes. supposedly lived in Wookiee Hole. Um, and Indubs, a very well-known London grime band... <laughs> <laughs> Who told you that? <laughs> and I, I think there may be some suggestion of witchcraft there. So we're going for Christine O'Donnell, cos she's denying being a witch. Paul Daniels has claimed he's a witch? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> OK, the logic's breaking down <laughs> here. Maybe so, Daniels. Tell us, Mars, please. Well, maybe Daniels, maybe Paul Daniels. Why? Uh, well, he hasn't claimed he's a witch, he's claimed he's a, a magician. That should be the right answer. It is. Yeah. It is. <laughs> It is true, Paul Daniels has never claimed he was a witch, although in the 80s he was famous for the spell. <laughs> <laughs> the Republican candidate Christian O'Donnell, in a video that emerged from her past, said that one of my first dates was with a witch. We went to a movie and then had a midnight picnic on a satanic altar. <laughs> I think we've all had dates like that. <laughs> <laughs> How did she then distance herself from this quote? She did a, an advert which began with the words, I am not a witch. Spot on. I'm not a witch. <laughs> I'm nothing you've heard. I'm you. <laughs> Is that the most crazy oh, political no. broadcast you've you, ever seen? You've got to feel sorry for Obama, cos how do you govern a country that seems to have decided that facts are the work of the devil? <laughs> What's their definition as the Tea Party, the Republican Tea Party, as opposed to the main Republican Party? Well, the, the Republican Party is very, very right-wing, and the Tea Party are mad. <laughs> <laughs> if you talk to Tea Party supporters, I think they all believe different things. The only thing they believe is that they're claiming America back. Yeah, but they don't know who from. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. From the voices in their head. Yeah. <laughs> well, she has got a lot of crazy opinions. These groups admitted that the report that said, hey, yay, we cloned a monkey, now we're using this to start cloning humans. Let them admit we anything they want, keep... but they won't do that here in the United States unless they all, are, all they craziness are, is gone. They are so doing they... that here in the United States. So American scientific companies are crossbreeding humans and animals and coming up with with mice with fully functioning human brains. <laughs> and I want their votes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I say, any chance of letting me out of this cage? <laughs> Some Mississippi cheese every Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm voting Democrats myself, yes. <laughs> but then I have got a human brain. brain. <laughs> and she's not the only crazy Republican. There's one Republican that's been a YouTube hit with his motivational speech. Has anyone seen this? Yeah. I have been a Republican in times good, and I have been a Republican in times bad. issued one of my most favorite quotes in the history of the spoken word, and it is as follows. In the middle of opportunity, <laughs> in the middle of difficulty lies in opportunity. I'm going to repeat that so I have clarity tonight. In the middle of difficulty lies opportunity. This is the opportunity we've been waiting for. So the end up singer to loser has also said that she's dealt with witchcraft. You you, you know end ups my no. No, no, not. very keen, very keen. Do you? <laughs> you keen end ups fan? Yeah, name, yeah. Name an end ups track. Well, uh <laughs> let's all go sex up that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah, that was that was the Crufts national <laughs> theme tune for quite some time. You, you've probably not heard of that one, it's a B-side. Um, <laughs> Can you sing it for us, Mark? Yeah. Yeah. Let's have a tune. <laughs> oh, let's all... <laughs> oh, let's all sex up that bitch. <laughs> she is a slag. I mean, I don't. Like, it sort of goes round and round. Um, Did you sing that to the tune of a hymn? <laughs> <laughs> you did, didn't you? You're going to hell! <laughs> The other person within the picture was Fiona Robertson, the witch from Wookie Hole. She actually skived work. Yes. And when she was saying she was ill, she yes. turned up on X Factor dressed as a witch. <laughs> After her appearance, the Wookie Hole witch revealed, I performed the day before Cheryl Cole was diagnosed with malaria. Coincidence? Yeah. <laughs> It's now the missing word round, which this week features the guest publication, Northern Life magazine. The award-winning magazine <laughs> celebrating Lancashire and Yorkshire and all their brilliant fights. <laughs> and we start with the seven wonders of what? Lancashire. The North. Warrington. No. Wigan. I'm going to do Blackburn. all the northern towns now. You're, you're, you're getting close. It is a place in the North. Yeah. Islington. Carlisle. <laughs> For those people inside the M25, that's really funny. Outside of the M25, <laughs> you have no idea. He may as well have just said Narnia. <laughs> it's actually the seven wonders of Skipton. <laughs> One of the wonders of the Yorkshire town of Skipton is that it has a shop that sells foreign food. <laughs> Next, what says woman declared dead? I demand a second opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. I think she said, I've had a nice sleep. That's exactly it. She said, I've had a wonderful sleep. <laughs> the Daily Telegraph described the confusion. We were told that she wouldn't come back, said Sebastian Pilliard, one of her three sons, as he removed several items from eBay. <laughs> <laughs> Next, uncle concerned about his girds, told to what? Stop making up words that don't exist. <laughs> Well, we can just make up words. I'm all concerned about his girds, told to never a nobber a nuba. <laughs> Until December, it's the month. <laughs> Ignore misprint in newspaper headline. Yeah. 
Well, the uncle concerned yeah. about his gird was told to play with his fittering stick. <laughs> <laughs> is this from the Northern magazine? It is from the Northern <laughs> magazine. <laughs> Next, men with lots of what are not as sexy? Uh, testicles. <laughs> I don't know why I said that, that's just a strange image that yeah. popped into my head. I think it's better out than in to coin a phrase. Uh, is it hair, beard, we're hairy? Whippets. <laughs> it's actually sisters. This is a study that found that male rats with more sisters attracted fewer mates. The study was carried out by David Crew, a psychobiologist at the University of Texas, who's got a PhD in watching rats shag. <laughs> And so to the final scores, which are Paul and Andy have five, but Ian and Miles win because they've scored six. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and I leave you with news that in the wake of the government spending review, Michael Gove unveils Britain's new state of the art defence system. <laughs> in London, rehearsals begin for Labour's amateur dramatic production of Gone with the Wind. Where is Ed Miliband's right hand? <laughs> and on Westminster's first ever dress down Friday, Boris Johnson's casual look is somewhat trumped by Vince Cable. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>From piano playing pinner boy to world renowned singer songwriter, the whole circle of life from a night with Elton John, starting next here on BBC Two, while BBC Three gets the good news from Russell Howard.